Hello students. Last time I talked about Euler angles and if you recall these Euler angles serve as generalized coordinates for describing the motion of a rigid body. Okay, the, they can be used as generalized coordinates because they are independent of each other. The same you cannot do with direction cosines because they are not all independent of each other. Okay. Uh, now what we'll do is, we'll ask how to obtain a given orientation of a rigid body from um, some previous earlier configuration. Okay, so meaning you start your, let's say at time t equal to zero, your rigid body is placed in some in some manner. Okay, and then at time t. I mean, in the meantime, it has been doing something, changing its orientation. And at time t, it is differently oriented. And you want to know the matrix which will take you from the original orientation at t equal to 0 to the orientation at t equal to t, okay, at time t equal, uh, at time t. Okay. So what we really want to do is um, construct the matrix, let's call it um, A, okay, and what will this matrix do? Take you from its orientation at t equal to 0 to t equal to t, time, where time is equal to t, okay, and uh, remember, um, that we are looking at the case where one of the points in the body is fixed, okay? Uh, so it has a fixed point and also remember that when we were talking about Euler angles, we had rigidly fixed a coordinate system in the body, meaning as the body moved, that coordinate system which was fixed in the body moved together with it, okay? And we were comparing the orientation of uh, that fixed system with respect to an inertial uh, coordinate system. Okay, so um, let's see how to write the matrix A. What your matrix A should do is when you start from the original configuration at time t equal to zero, okay, Let's say your coordinate system coincides with the inertial coordinate system. So the x prime axis is parallel to x, y prime is parallel to y, z prime is parallel to z. Okay. Then we do a set of transformations. Remember what was the first set of transformation? What was the first first transformation? It was an orientation about the z axis. Let's let's see that. Let's remember here. Here first rotation was a rotation by angle phi about the z-axis, okay? Which means that here I should have a matrix which will do the rotation, okay, it doesn't look good, which will do a rotation by, by angle phi. Okay, and the rotation is about z axis, okay? So which means you will have an entry one here, zero, 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 zero. Okay, rotation happens in the xy plane and the angle is phi, so you have cos of phi and cos of phi at the diagonal entries. And then you have sine of phi minus sine of phi. Okay, now with this, once we have done this, our x-axis has moved along the line of node. Okay, it has moved to the line of node. So your new x-axis lies here. Your new z-axis is still parallel to the original z. And your new y-axis is somewhere in this plane. Okay, now what you have to do, 
go from these intermediate axes to a new set of axes by doing a rotation about the line of node if you recall by an angle theta okay and again this is a counterclockwise rotation so what i should do is to effect that rotation i should include another matrix okay that is okay but the rotation is about which axis now what do you think the rotation is about which axis the rotation is about the new x axis remember your original x has moved along this and then now you are going to do a rotation about this axis so your uh, rotation is about this intermediate x axis meaning now you should have one here okay so your entries along this row, first row and first column should be like this and then a rotation by amount theta okay which is cos of theta here cos of theta here sin of theta here minus sin of theta here that's good okay now let's come to the last rotation which we have to do let's go back again okay the last one is by an amount psi okay now this rotation happens about this z axis you see in the previous rotation we already brought the intermediate z to our final z okay and then i'm going to rotate about this z which means in the matrix i have to get a rotation about z axis so the entries would be this okay the rotation is by amount psi so you again write cos of psi and cos of psi here like we had previously on the diagonal entries and then you have a sine of psi sine of psi with a minus sign okay and this will bring you to your final configuration x prime y prime z prime okay 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 yes let me use a straight okay this one is fine this is your matrix a which we wanted to find out okay that's your transformation matrix okay what you can do as an exercise is multiply all these three matrices this one this one and this one and write down an expression for a i will write it down for you and uh, you should reproduce this so if you multiply all those three matrices you should arrive at the following okay and let's see where is my let me write it down <coughs> your a would be cos of psi okay maybe i will write c psi yeah that will be better instead of writing cos cos sin let me write c c would stand for cos cos of psi then a cos of phi okay I want you to write C. C of phi minus C of theta S of 
phi s of psi okay while i am writing this uh, what you should do is you should just multiply these and compare with what i write eventually so this is your first entry uh, f uh, yeah first entry then you should have c of psi s of phi plus c of theta c of phi s of psi and then you have last entry in this row to be sine of psi sine of theta okay that's theta that's good minus sine of psi cos of phi minus cos of theta sine of phi cos of psi now a new entry here would be minus sine of psi sine of phi that's a phi plus cos of theta cos of phi and cos of psi then last entry here is cos of psi sine of theta okay we'll make a quick check at the end um, to see whether what we have written has some mistakes or not and we'll be able to check at least some uh, some things but we will not be able to completely I mean, verify this but that you should do by your explicit multiplication okay final entry in these in this uh, row so sine of theta sine of phi that's a phi not a psi here would be minus sine of theta cos of phi and then you have a cos of theta okay that's your three by three matrix now one immediate check you can do is you put all the angles to be zero okay if you put all the angles theta phi and psi to be zero you should get an identity matrix meaning you did no no transformation at all okay let's see if i put all of these to be zero the diagonal this will be one because it's a cos of zero this will be one zero uh, one again this has a sign so it goes to zero so what you get here is one on this diagonal entry this term is zero the one with negative sign is zero and these are all three causes so you get a one so that's also good this one is good it's cos of zero one that's fine the off diagonal entry should be zero and as you see each of them has at least one piece of one factor of psi okay at least one uh, sorry at least one uh, factor of sine of some angle so here is a sine here is a sine so they all are zero this guy is zero because of this okay this is a diagonal entry so that's fine this guy is zero because of this piece zero zero and that is one anyway so you see this indeed uh, gives you an identity matrix when you put all the angles to be zero and you should try um, thinking of some more tests that you can do which will convince you that when you write down the expression there is no no mistake okay we'll continue our discussion about um, rigid body dynamics further in the uh, in the next videos okay good